Today in our 2013 Ford F-150 Super Crew, we'll be installing the Universal Trailer Kit for trailer brake control, 7-way RV, and 4-way flat, part number ETB C7. The ETB C7 is a universal kit to allow you to install a brake controller on your vehicle that already has a 4-way flat mounted on it. This kit also allows you to run the 12-volt power supply back to your 7-way, as well as your brake controller back to the 7-way. Now on this particular vehicle, there's already a four-way flat from the factory that we'll be tying in with. Also on this installation, we will be running all the wires for the 12-volt power, as well as running a wire up for the brake controller, but we'll not actually be installing the brake controller during this installation. We will show all the other connections at the rear of the vehicle, as well as how we'll tie in for the 12-volt hot lead back at the seven-way. We'll begin back here at the rear of the vehicle. You can see here how the original, our factory four flat was already mounted. We'll go ahead and remove this from its bracket, and we'll be tying this in with the ETBC 7 4 and 7 way plug. Now you'll see that there's a bracket that comes with the kit that the 7 and 4 way will screw to. Now this particular customer has asked for us to mount this as high as we could. So we're actually going to use part of the factory mounting bracket that held the original 4 way in place. We'll go ahead and take the bracket supplied with the kit, line it up, and drill a hole through each side. Once the bracket has two holes in it, We'll then go ahead and put two holes in the factory four flat bracket on the truck itself. Now you may need to bend the bracket on the vehicle itself just a little bit to allow for some proper clearance of the seven way door to open up and not hit the bumper cover. We did have to bend it down just a little bit. Now that we've got our holes drilled, we'll go ahead and connect the seven and four way bracket to the factory bracket on the truck using two screws and two lock nuts. Once that's done, now we're ready to go ahead and connect our seven and four way plug to the bracket we just installed. To do this, we use the four screws and nuts supplied with the kit. The screws and nuts that we connect the seven and four way to the bracket are the ones that use a flathead screwdriver on one side and a wrench on the other side. Once we have these tightened down and we're sure that the seven way door opens far enough, now we're ready to go ahead and make our electrical connections and then route our wire to the front of the vehicle. Now you can also see that there's some other wires that come off of this plug as well. There's a blue wire, which will actually run up to the brake controller. There's a black wire, which is your 12 volt hot power lead. There's a white wire with a ring terminal on it, which is the ground wire. And there's a purple wire, which is to the reverse light circuit. Now we will not be installing the purple wire, so this wire will just get taped up later after we make some other connections. You'll also notice that the kit comes with a length of wire that has a black and a white wire and a gray sheathing. These two wires will be connected to the blue wire and the black wire at our plug at the rear of the vehicle via the butt connectors already on the plug wires. We'll then go ahead and strip some wire back so we can connect it to our butt connectors. The black wire will go to the black wire, and the white wire will go to the blue wire, or essentially become the brake feed if we were to put a brake controller in this vehicle. Once our butt connection's made, we'll go ahead and put some electrical tape on it to protect it. Now for our four flat, now you'll notice on the factory four-way, there's already some dielectric grease on this connection. If there was no grease already here, we would be adding some dielectric grease to give the connection some protection. This is part number 11755. Now we'll go ahead and plug the four-way in from the factory, as well as to the connection on the back of our plug. Once this connection's made, we'll go ahead and put a zip tie on it to help make sure that this four-flat connection stays together. Now that that's done, we'll go ahead and use some electrical tape to tape up all of our connections back here. Now we'll leave the white wire with the ring terminal loose, as we'll need to use a self-tapping screw supplied with the kit and ground it to the frame of our vehicle. Now that we have all of our electrical connections made, and we have the ground screw in on the white wire with the ring terminal, now we're ready to run our black and white wire that's bundled in the gray coating to the front of the vehicle. To help us do this, we're gonna use an old section of airline tubing to help feed this wire through the frame of the vehicle. Now that we've got our wire run up to the front of the vehicle by running it through the frame, we're gonna pull it out the frame, or we'll then run it up into the engine compartment. Again, we'll use some airline tubing to help us in this process. Now once we have the wire pulled up on the driver's side near the firewall, we're gonna to need to choose a location where we can mount our 40 amp circuit breaker. Right here on the firewall is a good location to mount this. We'll be using two of the small self-tapping screws supplied with the kit. Now you'll notice that the wire is plenty long here. We'll actually need to peel off the gray sheeting off the white and black wire at this point. So once you have your length figured out to where your black wire will tie in with your circuit breaker, we'll go ahead and strip the sheeting off of the other wire. Now that we have the white and the black wire exposed, we can go ahead and trim the black wire to length that'll reach the circuit breaker. We'll be connecting the black wire from the rear of the vehicle to the silver side of the circuit breaker. To make this connection, we use a small ring terminal supplied with the kit. Next, we'll go ahead and we're gonna cut off enough white wire that can go into the vehicle if they so choose later to add a brake controller. 
For now, we're just gonna bundle up the excess white wire, which is essentially the blue wire, and we'll use a few zip ties to help secure it here underneath the hood. Next, we'll need to go ahead and take the extra black wire that we trimmed off and put another small ring terminal on the one end, and we'll need to connect it to the copper or bronze side of the circuit breaker. We'll then go ahead and take this black wire and route it over to the battery. We will use a few zip ties along the way as well to help secure the wire. Once we have it routed over to the battery, we'll go ahead and trim the wire to length, and then we'll add the large ring terminal supplied with the kit. Next, we'll go ahead and connect it to the positive side of the battery. Now that we have our 12 volt wire connected to the positive side of the battery, now we're ready to do some tests to make sure that our seven and four way are working properly. To test the seven way, we'll use our tester here as shown in this gray box. As you can see here, when the running lights are on, the light lights up for clearance lights. The left turn works, as well as the right turn signal, as well as the brake light function. Now, since we don't have a brake controller in here, you will not see the brake control feed working. But when we flip the switch here, you will see that the 12 volt charge gauge does go up to the 12 volts. When you flip it off, it goes back off. So we do have 12 volt hot back at the rear seven way. Next, we'll go ahead and use our regular test light to test the four flat. On this one, we'll take our ground on our test light and put it to the exposed prong on the four way. Then the next hole up is the running lights or the brown wire. As you can see here, it's working fine. The next one up is the left turn. Again, that's working okay. And the top hole is the right turn. Now the top two are both the brakes. So with the brakes on, you'll get a constant light or a beep. Again, these are working just fine. With that, all of our functions are working at both the seven and the four way at the rear of the vehicle, except for the brake controller itself, which we did not install during this application. And that'll conclude our installation of the universal installation kit for trailer brake controller, seven way RV and four way flat, part number ETB C7 on our 2013 Ford F-150 Super Crew.